Well, we did it. We untied the lines and departed from Knoxville, Tennessee on Saturday, July 9th. Just about two hours downstream of us, we came to our first lock, which was Fort Loudon Lock. We radioed the lock tender over our handheld VHF radio, and we told him it was our first time ever locking through, and if he didn't mind to take a little extra time to help us, he was very helpful and friendly. He told us to put our fenders out on the starboard side. And for this lock, we decided that I would drive and Eric would fend off. And well, neither one of us really did our jobs very well. We were coming in pretty hot, Eric told me to kick it in reverse, and I forgot about the prop walk, which walked us right into the wall right about now. Bummer, dude. Luckily the lock tender was kind enough to let us go down one more notch. We switched positions for this job. And we try to tie off around the center of our boat. Looks like everything's under control here talking to the lockmaster, when all of a sudden these weird currents just start swinging our boat's bottom way out to the side. We're pulling and we're tugging and we're not getting anywhere. The lock tender comes with this giant pole and helps pull us back. God bless him. He was so kind to us. We recenter our rope and we're ready for some lock action. The lock tender said he didn't even see a scratch on our boat, and upon further inspection, we realized that we had only rammed the anchor against the concrete wall. Eric did a really good job at putting out the fenders, and we had a dose of luck that day. Once we made it to the bottom, the big door swung open, and we waited patiently for the horn blast to signal that we could leave. With our first lock complete, I was feeling good about continuing our journey. We had quite a few miles to head downriver, but we all got to go through Loudoun County and past DuPont, Tate, and Lyle. This is the plant that Eric used to work at for about five years, so it was really neat getting to drive by his old work. This is us going under a bridge. I like how Sammy's concerned about it too. This was our day two anchorage right in front of Watts Bar. It's a nuclear power plant and we anchored in a park right above the dam so we could get a, a good early start in the morning. After our first fiasco with the lock, we decided to switch things up. Eric drove, I fended, and we kept the prop walk in mind. This lock is a lot smoother than the first one. We're almost like pros. Tied off here and you can see me happily chatting away to the lock tender telling them our big plans about heading south down the Tennessee Tom Bigby waterway. This was when we learned we really won't be going that much farther. The next block we were to go through, Lock Chickamauga, was closed that day for repairs that would be lasting a month. Still in disbelief, we weren't really sure what our plans were going to be next. We decided to head off downstream because we had already come too far at this point. We called the lock tender to make sure what they were telling us was true, and in fact it was. The lock would be closed for a month. So we just kind of pitter-pattered downstream, called our parents, called some marinas, 
and decided to take our time and do some sailing. We sailed pretty much the entire day this day, just zigzagging back and forth on the lake trying to head upwind. We got some good practice, and at some point the wind really picked up. We were going like eight knots. I think the camera died before then, unfortunately. And I think we found the perfect solution to our problem. There was a state park near Chattanooga that we talked to on the phone. They had a dinghy dock, um, showers, and it seemed like they were pretty relaxed on um, using the facilities. We decided to embrace the delay and we're excited about spending the next month exploring Chattanooga.